you for tuning in to Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid. In season two of Hacks and Hobbies, we're visited by our amazing guests coming from all walks of life. Want to learn their story, their struggles, and their journey on how they got to where they are today. So stick around. In this episode, we get to chat with Trey Tatro. I met Trey through mutual connections and through the LinkedIn local event. I saw him at the first LinkedIn local event and I was like, that dude is, that dude is cool. And uh, finally got to connect with him. I'm like, hey, I saw you there. Sorry we didn't get a chat, but what's your story? So Trey, tell us your story and how you ended up being in this part of the world. Well, yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, the LinkedIn locals have been a great way of uh, meeting people in the area. Uh, and, you know, I think we've seen each other at pretty much every single one since then. I, I may have missed one. Um, and, you know, we've done some work together as well. Uh, you helped us with uh, recording some videos for uh, the education side of uh, what evolved into Homeplete. Um, and, uh, okay, so what got me here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I moved to Virginia uh, at the beginning of this year, uh, beginning of 2018. And uh, before that, I was living mostly in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I say that because, like I mentioned, uh, I did live in uh, Kansas uh, for a year as well. Uh, so grew up in Pennsylvania, pretty much in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. and uh, moved down to Florida, went there for college, and then stayed for about four, four and a half years after that. Mm -hmm. uh, moved out to Kansas for a year, back to Florida temporarily before moving up to uh, Virginia. And, you know, I mean, I'm loving it up here. There's, there's just so many things that you, you can do, um, basically in all categories, whether it's, you know, networking or entertainment uh, museums, uh, you know, it just kind of everything that's going on, all the restaurants and stuff. Uh, so, I mean, it's a really cool place to be and uh, I'm excited to be here. Yeah. There's no shortage of things to do in the DC area. It's quite, I mean, people come from all over the world, come here to check out the museums, check out the white house and well, everything else. Yeah, and you know, un unlike what I, what I feel like I've noticed with a lot of other cities is that it's not really restricted to just, or not restricted, but limited to uh, certain areas. You know, I mean, it seems like pretty much anywhere you go around here, you can find something to do and to be entertained. And I think that's pretty unique to this area. Well, that's awesome. So tell me something about this place that you didn't expect or did you expect almost everything? Uh, you know, I, I think that this is moving to this area um, and going off doing something that was on my own as opposed to, uh, you know, having a, a regular nine to five. Uh, those two things really kind of prompted me into getting into uh, networking uh, and just, you know, going to all these different events and meeting with people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's something that's very easily done around here. I don't, I don't think it's as easily done in at least some other cities. I'm not saying uh, that it's like that in all places. Yeah. Um, but with that, what I would say really surprised me is, you know, just how, how friendly everybody mm. is. Uh, and, you know, how easy it is to go about with, uh, you know, meeting people, uh, learning what they do, talking about what you do, and then, you know, helping each other make connections to uh, other people. Um, it, you know, because not only do you have such obviously a large government focus here, but also uh, a large corporate uh, concentration here. You know, there's so many corporations that have, uh, you know, headquarters and stuff here. Even Amazon bringing, you know, one of their two new locations to the area. Uh, plus all the schools and everything. So, you know, there's just a lot, there's a, there's a broad spectrum of uh, people and industry here. 
and it's just surprising how you know how for the most part everyone tries to be really helpful to each other uh with it and it's not uh not as stuck up as you think it might be that is a really good point i i mean we're we're not any we're like new york new york i hear people are pretty closed off or pretty busy pretty focused on what they're working on but here people for the most part i've found people are quite friendly yeah yeah absolutely and uh you know in some of the jobs that i've had before um you know i i haven't traveled to every major city in the u.s yet but i've at least been to most of them and i don't know even before i i mean part of the reason that i moved here Mm -hmm. is because uh when visiting granted i do have some family here which is why i would come and visit uh but just coming to visit you know it just had a a much different vibe than uh, most of the other cities that I, that I had been to. Nice. Now, with Homefleet, sorry, I'm throwing something random in there. That's okay. Right. So, you you said you haven't visited many major cities. I think I've traveled through thirty states so far, and. Everywhere, you know, I, I didn't really spend a lot of time because that's another thing that you get to to absorb in the culture and see what's right. going on. And that's what really you get to take in the culture and take in the people's views and everything. And um, this place is pretty, pretty awesome. I mean, it's very fast paced, but it, you can slow it down so much based on which part of the Northern Virginia, DC area that you end up in. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You, the, the more closer you go to DC and, and Baltimore and uh, other major city like Arlington, it's fast paced, super fast. But if you go move farther away, like I'm closer to the, the airport, it's much slower here, right? Yeah, more suburban than anything else. Yeah, I'd say you could probably find a correlation between the pace of things compared to how easy or difficult it is to find parking. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Absolutely, man. It's so annoying to me when I, you have to pay for parking, <laughs> right? And it's like, come on, dude. And uh, especially it, in, if you're in Rockville, because uh, even in Rockville, there's areas that you know you get free parking. But most of the time, if you're close to downtown or close to the city and other uh, city official buildings, you'll find that you have paid parking at exorbitant amount. Oh, yeah. yeah half the time it's easier. Not, I mean, not even easier, but also cheaper or at least equal price to Uber into D.C. Uh, or Lyft into D.C. as opposed to driving yourself there and then finding parking. Exactly. You might as well ride a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> or or one of those uh, scooters now. <laughs> exactly. So I haven't seen those scooters around. I um, Maybe in Baltimore I saw some, but I don't know about DC if, if, if I've seen any. Okay. I yeah, I saw some a couple of weeks ago. So Nice. Yeah. Fortunately, unlike in the South Park episode, I didn't trip over any. But <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. Um, what we recently got is a hoverboard through uh, through Target. It was on sale, and you know, I picked it up for a hundred bucks. And I was like, "This is so cool!" And my kids are, you know, riding it. So we haven't taken it outdoors yet. We've been riding just indoors. Um, and since we have gates up for my little kid, we, you know, we have very limited, um, even indoors. <clears throat> but. Um, as soon as spring comes, you know, that, that thing's going to go out and we'll, be, we'll see how many falls we get because... <laughs> <laughs> they, That's they why you recommend. don't see that one. <laughs> exactly. They recommend, you know, you put on a helmet, you have some knee pads. So we'll see what happens. I will say one of my, I guess we could call it favorite times that I saw mm-hmm. someone using one of those. Favorite more in the sense of really... Um, but it was when I was still down in Florida. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I saw this guy as I was driving along and, you know, he was uh, pushing his baby stroller, uh-huh. but he was pushing the stroller while he was on a hoverboard. <laughs> and I was like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, once you ride one of these things, <laughs> it's a mind changer. Um, actually, we went to a wedding um, earlier in the summer. And at one of the weddings, the videographer was using a hoverboard and he's got this camera gear on him and um, the camera is on the stabilizer itself, but then he's moving on the hoverboard. And I was like, dude, that looks so cool. <laughs> like, all the footage that he's shooting must be super clean. He can walk backwards, he can you know, move forwards, in very smooth fashion yeah i guess that's a new way to zoom in and out yeah yeah it was really cool (laughs) (laughs) so um so growing up right so how did you get into let's say entrepreneurship what was your motivation and um you know because i'm working on uh some some book for myself. Uh, it's not a book for myself, but I'm working on a chapter for the magnetic entrepreneur. And those are some of the things that I'm writing about, you know, how did I get into entrepreneurship? And yeah. Um, I've got way too much stuff. So do you tell me, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think what it kind of ultimately came down to was just uh, the idea and the challenge of, you know, having an idea mm-hmm. and then actually turning it into something. Yeah. Um, you know, making that idea become a reality uh, and building a business out of it. And, you know, also to show that, hey, the idea wasn't terrible. Yeah. And that's not to say that there aren't plenty of terrible ideas along mm-hmm. the way. Because <laughs> there <laughs> certainly are. Um, and so, I mean, I guess, you know, Kind of entrepreneurship itself has always kind of been uh, the focus for me. And there's been some other, um, you know, ideas that I've uh, pursued and, you know, things that I've kind of worked on in the past uh, mm-hmm. in, in various industries. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, kind of the baseline of that and what they all really have in common is that at the end of the day, it was the entrepreneurship part that was, um, you know, most appealing to me mm-hmm. and the idea that you can basically, you know, plug in or take out different parts of, you know, whether it be the business itself or the industry, you know, something that works here might work with another idea later on. Uh, and you just kind of keep learning from that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this year was the first time that I really decided to, you know, get serious on it and, and fully mm-hmm. focus on it and that was uh that that was the intention with moving to virginia yeah um you know i i just know how much opportunity that there is in this area again with you know all of the networking all of the uh different government and industries and uh colleges and everything and so uh you know when i moved here it was okay if i move there then i'm going to be focusing on starting you know starting a business full-time not uh still having a regular nine to five and then trying to do it in the hours afterwards because i had done that in the past yeah i mean for some people it does and Mm -hmm. uh, i think you know one of the biggest things that kind of can help to actually make that work is having someone else work on it with you um because that's something that i haven't done in the past and, uh, you know, when, when you don't have anyone else helping you with it, then it literally is, if, if it's going to get done, you're going to be the one doing it. And if you're constantly trying to do that, you know, after working your full-time job and also, you know, n- not necessarily in the regular business hours of everyone else, uh, it can just make it hard to really start and find consistent traction. No, man, that's, that's absolutely true. Um, focusing on one thing and making sure that you're 
getting through everything, right? And focusing, sorry, I'm just just circling the idea yeah. of of how to get that. And it's it's really it's really important that you put your entire mind into your idea and give it all you've got. And then if you don't see that it's not going to work, then, you know, you have options to pivot. But then if you're only giving, it's like you're trying to make 10 sandwiches at the same time with different ingredients. Right. You're not going to have a full sandwich for an hour. <laughs> right. <laughs> really hungry. Why am I making 10 different sandwiches? So, um, no, that's really good. That's really good. Yeah, and that, that's a really good metaphor for it. You know, mm -hmm. like you said, you could be working on 10 different things yeah. or you could just focus on the one thing and, and enjoy it a lot sooner and actually get the benefit out of it a lot sooner. Exactly. Or at the same time, learn that those ingredients don't go together. Yeah, uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and start over. <laughs> yeah, start over. Um, sweet, man. So tell me if you had a hobby to pick or had the opportunity to be in the hobby, what would it be? Or did you have hobbies growing up? I think in hindsight, um, I mean, yes, I did have hobbies growing up. I think in hindsight, if I had one that I could, you know, get into sooner, uh, it would probably be reading and, you know, reading nonfiction. I mean, there's not, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with, you know, reading fiction all the time because at the end of the day, that's still going to help with, you know, vocabulary, thinking things through, all the benefits that come along with reading. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess, you know, it would ultimately come down to kind of what is your goal, uh, you know, that you're wanting to, you know, what are you hoping to get out of it? Uh, but for me, you know, really getting into reading has been a big thing this year. Um, yeah. I would say probably starting late last year and, uh, you know, just reading different business books, um, or, you know, books, even if it's on another industry or something like that. And it kind of helps to, you know, it helps you through the thinking process and, uh, basically just coming up with ideas and learning things a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, I, I think a lot of times it can be, oh, you know, I don't know how to do this. So I need to find the right people to talk to and the right consultants to talk to and to pay to yeah. you know, teach me how to do this or to help with it. And, you know, that can certainly help you over the learning curve a lot faster. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think a, a, a much cheaper alternative is to, you know, just pick up a bunch of books on the topic yeah as long as they're good books on the topic and you know just start going through those um and learning about whatever it is uh that you're you know that you're trying to learn about and whatever topic that is uh because at the end of the day that's probably written by somebody who has experience in it as well yeah absolutely. So, i mean it's not as fast mm -hmm. um and you know it's not as hands-off but it's certainly cheaper <laughs> and yeah. it's a way for you to actually learn about it as opposed to just outsourcing it and then, you know, taking someone's word at this is what needs to be done Yeah, and not really understanding the process behind it. Yeah. Learning the process is <clears throat> extremely, extremely important. And uh, I remember a few years ago, there was a website called, the 30 days challenge. And this gentleman would challenge you to uh, build, you know, come up with a few ideas and write up articles. And basically in 30 days, the, your challenge was to make $1 off of that one idea that you came up with from this whole exercise. Right. And it was, it was genius. It was, Great. I actually tried to go look for that person. And when I searched for 30 day challenge on Google, <laughs> <laughs> there's hundreds of results coming back, right? Cause oh, yeah. so many 30 day challenges now. And 
30 day challenge is actually a joke, but it's not really because it also, I mean, it builds the muscle, but if you're, if you want to be habit forming and form a habit of anything at all, you need to do a 60 day challenge because that's how long it, it truly takes for habits to build in your mind. Yeah. I, I've heard that the, you know, I guess the scientific best amount of days mm -hmm. is uh, 66. Yeah. 66. Um, but you know, like you said, that 30 day, especially if you're trying to test an idea when it comes to entrepreneurship, Oh yeah. Uh, you know, then th that's a great way to do it. And it, it, it kind of lends itself to uh, the lean startup uh, mm -hmm. approach, which is, you know, basically just keep testing at the bare minimum and, you know, refine, uh, test, refine, test, refine. Yeah. And if you follow that 30 day challenge, then, you know, mm -hmm. if you do make $1 from it, yeah. sure, yeah. you probably are not in the green on it. And you probably wouldn't say that, you know, spending a month working for $1 is worth your time. No. But it, it's that learning process. Exactly. And at the same time, it is used basically as a verification as to whether or not it's an idea worth pursuing. Because mm -hmm. if, you know, you find out that no, no one's willing to pay for it, mm -hmm. um, then, you know, if you save yourself six months of working on something before taking it out and finding that no one's willing to pay for it then absolutely. it's better to find out in that first month. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. That totally makes sense. What's your main goal for homeplete.com? With homeplete, you know, what we're, uh, what we're really focusing on doing is kind of creating a one-stop shop uh, for somebody who is or will be uh, at some point a homeowner. And, you know, basically the idea behind that, because one-stop shop, that sounds pretty generic nowadays. Um, but, you know, what we mean by that is really everything from uh, the education side of, you know, learning about buying and selling a home if it's your first time, um, or even if it's not your first time, you know, it's something that isn't done all that often. Uh, and the market can change, the way that things are done can change. So helping people be prepared for that, uh, as well as uh, being a homeowner. Uh, and then, uh, you know, introducing a new way to do a home search. Um, so we have a social home search on our site where people can invite their friends, family, real estate agent, whoever, into their home search to help them, you know, look at houses, look at, look at different things at the house and, you know, can take notes right there and everyone can share their notes. Um, yeah, together online on the website. And then, like you said, you know, helping someone find a real estate agent who is actually a good fit for them. Uh, because there's, give or take, about 2 million real estate agents out there in the US. And on average, uh, a person will interview anywhere between one and 2.7 real estate agents before they hire someone. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, yeah, and there's a there's a lot of different things that go into uh, you know a property, and it's not just uh, one real estate agent. It, it's not you know everyone does the same thing, and I kind of make the comparison of uh, a doctor. You know, there's doctors who have different specializations, and same thing with real estate agents. So our goal is to help people find the right one who does you know has the right kind of specialization to help them with their home purchase or sale. Um, and then the final step of it, which we're still working on getting this implemented into the site, is uh, basically a, a moving manager. So once you know, you know where you're moving, when you're moving, this tool will help you basically, you know, through that entire timeline of kind of like here's what you need to do this week to be ready. And I mean, it gets down to the details of you know, separate what's going to be donated versus what you're packing. So uh, it gets pretty detailed on it. And then also helps with things like uh, forwarding your address, setting up your new utilities, your new driver's license, all that kind of stuff. Nice. Very yeah. cool. I mean, something that people would want to do, would do when they're moving to a new location, they have to do all of these things. Like 
when I moved from Colorado, I had to go through most of these steps myself. Do the driver's license, you know, find the utilities. Of, of course, the real estate agent absolutely helps in making sure that you have the right utilities turned on. And sometimes if you're buying, if you're renting a home from a place, then they just say, you know, these are the utilities that are already here. You just got to put it under your name and start paying them. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, try to, again, keep it all in one spot so it's not, okay, now you need to go find the information for this, you know, utility company in that one or figure out, you know, what it is that you need to do. Uh, for your license here again just try to keep it all as simple as possible for someone because as you and I both know from past experiences it's already stressful enough moving and packing uh, and going through all those moves so whatever we can do to help make it easier no yeah that's that's totally awesome so um, how did you come about this idea and um, bringing all this together was it your past experience or something new that you learned um, you know, I, I think it was kind of a combination of things. Uh, I got into real estate at the beginning of this year. And uh, part of that came from past experience. Uh, I lived in Kansas for a year. And uh, while I was there, I was looking at buying a home. And I think during that process, uh, you know, I kind of went about it the normal way. Well, what's now the normal way of looking online and then, you know, seeing a property that I thought looked interesting. So I'd request more information and a random agent would call me and say, okay, you know, I can meet you there uh, at this time and, you know, we can see it. And I did that for a few places. And uh, I think it was probably the fourth or fifth agent that I worked with who I actually thought this is someone that I would work with. Uh, just because the other agents that I met with, you know, it was kind of like, okay, let's walk through, you know, any questions? And it was like, well, you know, can you kind of help guide me on some of this? Because this is my first time doing it. And, you know, some of them I even, I would even text them the next day and be like, hey, uh, you said you were going to follow up with me on this and I haven't got it yet. And then I still wouldn't send it to me anyway. And I was like, mm, okay. So... <laughs> And then, but that, uh, the last agent that I met, you know, he was, he was really good, uh, really helpful and, you know, really good about just kind of walking through the entire process, taking the time to explain everything, even when I was asking things probably three or four times and, uh, you know, just seeing how, how night and day of a difference it can make. Um, I think that was kind of what originally, you know, kind of planted the seed of getting into real estate. Uh, and then once I was in it, you know, I, I think it's one of those things where you kind of think it's, it's a job that pretty much everyone can do. Uh, but once I got into it was when I realized just how, you know, how many specializations that there can be within the industry and how, you know, you can really tailor your niche as an agent to know one particular thing or one particular area and, you know, just really be stellar at that. Um, and you know, something like that, of course, comes with time and experience. Uh, uh, but yeah, but then, you know, I, I kind of recognized the, the issue of the fact that agents spend a lot of time, you know, getting that experience and that expertise, but at the same time, buyers and sellers don't really take the same amount of time to find someone who does have that expertise, um, on average. Uh, and you know, this is like the generic saying for real estate. It's one of the largest transactions of your life. So, you know, it, it is good to find someone who has that, uh, time and experience. So that, that's why I decided to go ahead and go down this route of actually helping kind of bring the two together. Mm. That's really interesting because, you know, as you're talking about people's expertise and the different areas of expertise that you need in the home buying industry, you know, you gotta, um, I can't list out those items, but it makes a lot of sense. 
And when you mentioned that, you know, you're not getting the right type of response that you're looking for, it's maybe because we are, number one, living in a type of world where everything's just accessible to everyone. And so what we try to do is we try to spread ourselves thin, so thin that you can't focus on the one thing that you need to be focusing on, right? And this way, it's like, okay... I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to see which one will give me the quickest results or give me the fastest turnaround time. And we end up losing focus on the thing that we should be focusing on. And, and that, is, uh, that is a big problem. And so, to, especially for people joining and becoming new, um, <clears throat> new real estate agents, right? They will... It's either new real estate agents or agents that have a lot of experience that go into, okay, I don't really need to do this. I already have experience in this. Let me go find something new. Let me go, you know, so I don't know what's going in their mind and how, why, you know, how you were able to come with this. So that's really, it's really crazy. Yeah. And, you know, like, like you said, and it doesn't apply uh, just to real estate, but once you're in something for long enough, you can you know, you get stuck in kind of a, a routine of how to do things or, you know, things kind of get put on autopilot and, um, you know, that can be fine. But uh, at the same time, that doesn't mean that there isn't something out there that could help make it easier or someone out there that could help, you know, make it easier or just help remove you having to do some of those things on autopilot uh, and instead letting someone else kind of help with it. Yeah, absolutely. Man, that's that's some good stuff. Well, I wish you best of the luck so people can find information on homeplete.com. If you're looking to buy a home or sell a home, you can check out homeplete.com. Where else can uh, people find you, Trey? Uh, so one of the other things that I do is uh, I have a podcast of my own that I've been recently starting back up and I can't say that it's the same production quality or the same uh, frequency as yours. <laughs> uh, but, and you can actually find uh, the episodes for that on, um, on Homeplete's website as well. And uh, yeah. And what that podcast is called is military transition stories. And uh, basically that's talking with uh, either veterans or active duty members or, uh, you know, spouses of either active duty or veterans and just talking about uh, basically the transition uh, from military to civilian life, uh, what that was like for them, you know, the experiences, any advice they can share to people who are going to be going through that. Uh, and then, you know, also talking about what it is they're currently doing and how, uh, their time in the military help lead to where they are now. Well, Trey, it was really awesome chatting with you. Um, I'll let you do this again and, you know, talk uh, a little more about marketing because that's something I wanted to get into. Well, that's, that's perfectly fine because right now I'm in the process of all of the books that I'm reading are marketing and yeah. at the point of trying to learn, okay, how the hell do we do this? Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> It might be better to talk about that at a later date. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds perfectly fine to me. But but yeah, no, happy to be on and thanks for you know taking the time for us to be able to talk about this. Yeah, man. Fantastic. Well, talk to you soon, man. All right. I'll talk to you soon, Janae. Have a good one. Thank you for listening to this Hacks and Hobbies episode. Junaid would love to hear from you, so please leave a rating or a review on Apple Podcasts. Visit hacksandhobbies.com to find additional information on the guest today, as well as the show notes.